Hey you guys, it is me Laura from Ticket to Learning. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids, ages three, eight, and nine. And today I am excited to be doing a collab with you. I reached out to Katie at Life in the Mundane and Tanya at Project Happy Home and they said they would be happy to do this collab with me. And if you haven't noticed from the title, today is National Book Lovers Day. So it is a super good holiday for us homeschooling moms as well as those of us who just love read. Some of my best memories growing up are going with my family to Barnes and Noble or used bookstores and we would all load up on our books and read them and it was so much fun. But not every child loves to read. There's a few things that get in the way of that. First you can have a struggling reader, a child who struggles to read and that can certainly squelch any love of reading and you also just have your kids who are completely disinterested and feel like there are better things to do than be reading books. If you have kids in either of those categories be sure to listen to all the ideas I'm about to give you and go over and check out um Katie's channel, Life in the Mundane. She will be posting a video with her suggestions on Wednesday. And you can also check out Tanya's channel, um, Project Happy Home, and she will be posting on Thursday. So hopefully between the three of us, you will walk away with an arsenal of ideas that you can help attack reading in your homeschool this year, especially for those kids who are struggling and who might need a little boost. So I am specifically talking about the period in reading where kids go from reading easy kind of controlled picture books, ones that might be leveled, ones that are um, fairly easy to read, and they're making a transition into kind of harder to read books, the transitional stage into chapter books, into reading what some people would refer to as real books. However, that is debunked. All books are real, bo real books. But the first stage to kind of transfer over into that is actually picture books. Now, a lot of times people think that because there's pictures, because there's a book like this, it's going to be easy. Now, if you have a struggling reader who is really trying hard to read, this might not be the best transition because oftentimes the, the text in, excuse my toddler, she's being loud. My husband's out there with her though. But a lot of times the text in these books is, is not super easy to read. The author has to convey what they need to convey in a very few amount of words and it can be quite high level reading. So if you have an older child who's struggling this might be a good option for them. But I have a couple books to show you how this can help transition to chapter books. So this is called Tuttle's Red Barn and there are lots of chapter books that are picture books. This one isn't technically a chapter book but it's a nice transition. You follow the oldest farm in America from its history from when it first began and so you have a new heading for each generation and so that would be a very easy chapter break. So if your child gets tired easily or just isn't really sure you can see there's there's a new chapter a new generation and there's not a whole lot of text and then there's a new one and then there's the next generation and then again not a whole lot of text and then there's the next one. And you can move through these because it gives your child a sense of confidence, a sense of gaining purpose, a sense of moving forward, which is always important when people are trying to learn new skills that are difficult. Another one that I actually don't have, this is a book I would love to add to our collection that we checked out at the library. It's called Armstrong, The, Adventure, um, the Adventurous Journey of a Mouse in the Moon. And I know there's another book like this that has Undersea with Armstrong. This is a book that is filled with gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. It's a pretty thick picture book, but there are chapters. There's, I think, five or six chapters in the book. So it's a good way to get your child transitioning over to chapter books, but still feeling like they're reading a picture book. And the story is engaging and the chapters are not super long, um, but that's another great way to kind of bridge over is through picture books that have sections because it, then it gets in them in this mindset of oh my goodness I don't have to sit down and read this whole thing at once which I think when kids go from ch um, reading picture books where they read the whole thing at once to reading these longer to reading chapter books it can feel overwhelming because in their mind they think they have to read the whole thing but with these sections and giving them ability to break and stop kind of gets in their mind that you can read a little bit at a time and keep going. Another great way to get these is these leveled readers step into reading. So these are familiar because many children read some of these step into reading books as they're learning to read and they do get progressively harder. But then you have these chapter books. So let me show you just a chapter here. There are lots of pictures still. It still feels like a picture book. 
but it's very distinctly broken up into chapters and then you're on your next chapter but you are having more words on the page and then again I would put their level five in that same kind of category although this might actually start moving to regular chapter books they're very short but and they have lots of let's show you the first chapter lots of pictures on the page so it still has that picture book feeling but then you do have a few pages that are pretty text heavy now if your child struggles with a bunch of words on a page right now this wouldn't be a good jump but if your child just wants to feel the confidence of completing again just one chapter at a time that's going to be about the same or less than they're reading in some of their readers or picture books now and so you can really just kind of build that confidence by reading just a little bit at a time. So now let's move on to the next category, which is very similar to picture books, but it's also different. Again, depending on what, what, what it is that's standing in the way of your child reading would help you determine these. And the next one I'm gonna go to is graphic novels. Now, this series right here, Billy, Billy and the Mini Monsters, is where my son really took off with reading and started feeling ownership of his reading and feeling like, um, he could move from picture books and things like that to chapter books. So a book like this is going to have very little text on every page. So it moves quickly, which again, makes your child feel like when you see all these pages, like they're making progress and getting through the book. And then this one is kind of a mix of just regular pictures, which you can get chapter books that just have pictures like this. But then this one also, moves into let's see if i can find a few pages it also has some graphic novel type pages so it's gonna have some pages like this so it's a really good bridge because it gets them used to the graphic novel format but it's also got pages with lots of pictures and a little bit of text so this series is called um, Billy and the Mini Monsters, which I know you can get through Usborne Books and More. I'm not sure if you can get them elsewhere. There's more in the series than this, but this is what we started with. And um, I'll talk about series a little bit more, but this is kind of a good type of transition into graphic novels. And I know that there are more books like this. Um, another kind of transition to graphic novel. Um, this one's a little bit earlier, but yes, yeah, Super Narwhal and Jelly Jolt. There's these narwhal um, books. They are longer and you might have some Dr. Seuss books that would fit in this kind of longer book category. Um, this one has chapters as well so it kind of gets them again in that section at a time but this again is going to get them moving through quickly and if you have a struggling reader these are very engaging even for older kids and it's going to help them to achieve success by getting through one whole part and then knowing that, okay, they can rest and they can, you know, keep going. And so this is going to help build stamina. And a lot of people say, you know, well, but there's so many pictures and this isn't a real book. It is a real book. And what you want your child to feel like, you don't want them to feel like reading is this huge hill that they have to climb. You want them to have success. And the more success they have with this level, maybe next they'd be willing to try something like Billy Mo Mini Monsters or even something big and thick like this. If this was a book filled with just pages and pages of words, many children would feel overwhelmed. But there are so many graphic novels coming out now that these pages seem very accessible and the stories are broken up into chapters again so it gives your child a stopping point a place to try to get to to feel like there is success this book for example is so good there is so much depth to it even though it is a graphic novel and my son and I had so many conversations when he was reading this book questions he would come to me with and things that he would ask and so this can help especially an older reader feel like they're reading a really big book but make it accessible to them, make it more doable and help them feel like they're making progress. But even just a child walking around with a big book, I know as a child, when I was carrying big books that I was reading, I felt smart. And so sometimes having these bigger books that are even graphic novels are better than having a little book like, um, 
like this one. This is a smaller book and it's a chapter book and I don't know the, what the word count comparison is, but this might actually have more words in it than this one. But this feels like an accomplishment. And then once someone finishes a book like this, they might feel like, ah, oh, I'm a reader. And so these are good. And there are so, so, so many graphic novels out now on so many topics. Um, you should be able to find something appealing to your child. There are graphic novel classics. There are graphic novels on just about anything. Don't discount the graphic novel. That can be super helpful. So the next section, and there is a lot of overlap in these, but the next section is just moving on to books that have high picture to text ratio. That means that there are a lot of pictures in the book and there are not pages and pages of just text. You're gonna have a lot of pictures mixed in there to help break up the text. This is a series that would be a good example of that. There are a lot like this as well. This is called Fizz and the Police Dog. Um, Fizz the Police Dog, and it's a whole series we went through. But you have your short chapters and there's a lot of pictures on every page. And again, what that does is that that can be less overwhelming, especially if you have a, a child with dys dyslexia. These kinds of um, high picture to text ratio stories can be really helpful, especially if you have a student that has something like dyslexia. These books can be helpful because it's harder to get lost on the page. There's not as many words running in together and running into each other. So these books can be really good for that. And this is a series that's a four part series. So that these kinds of books can be really good too, especially if you find one that is high interest to your child. And because it's a series and the books are short, they can move through them and feel like, oh, I read one book, oh, I read two books, oh, I read three books, oh, I read four books. And technically this could all be put together as one book. The author has chosen to break them up, but that's good because again, it's about helping your child to feel like they're making progress and they're accomplishing something really good. Another example of that is the American Girl books. I have these from my childhood. So these are nice and thin. Um, you get a bunch of books in this series and I think they make books like this still think. Um, but there's a bunch in the series. So each book, your child will feel accomplished after reading a whole book and move on to the next one, even though they could all be put in one book. This just helps your child to feel more accomplished. And as you can see, um, this one has more text per page. So this is going to be more, more information. And this, I think, again, would be more for a, a student who's not as interested. Um, or depending on the age of the struggling reader, because there are a lot of words on the page. But once they're start, they're really ready to start tackling books like that. These are great because they still have the picture, pictures that kind of take up a little bit of space and help them feel familiar, like this is something they've seen before. And then there's pages like this that just have loads of you know big pictures and things in them. And so this can be helpful. And again, having the shorter books. Um, especially in a series can really help your child to feel like they're accomplishing because look at all of these books that I've read like that is a big deal and that's super cool so that is another thing so the next kind of level or section that I'm going to go on into is books that have short chapters keeping the chapter short and sweet if you have a struggling reader and they are or an uninterested reader and they're faced up against a big chapter that's long and looks like it's going to take forever to read it's easier just to avoid it and not do it and it just seems daunting so a couple examples that i have of books with short chapters this one is also a high interest too are these choose your own story books these come in all different levels. They come on all different topics. More and more publishers are starting to write books like this. And it's fun because it is interactive. So whether your reader is struggling or just interesting, uninterested, it makes them a part of the story. I've seen ones targeted more towards girl type interests. I've seen ones targeted to boy type interests. I've seen ones targeted to history. They have a boxcar children series now that's a choose your own mystery. So these can be really helpful and the chapters tend to be short because you have your explanation and you have a few pages and then you're met with a choice. Now, if you have to, you can put down the book, stop and go do something else. But once you make your choice, you turn to the right page and then you read some more until you have your next choice. Now, some students will read until they die 
or whatever the the bad thing is they they mess up the mystery or whatever the case may be depending on the book that they're reading others will just need to read a little bit at a time and some will read and then they see what happened and they're like oh no no wait but what if i made this choice and they'll go back and want to read more and so this really encourages more reading and because the chapters are short it's easy to say oh just one more oh just another one so short chapters are a big help i love avi and i highly recommend his books in general he is one of my favorite children's authors and one thing that he does with these big books that he writes is he often will break up the chapters which I find is really appealing to struggling readers or reluctant readers. Now this book in particular I would recommend for kids 10 and up but if you have a child who's 10 or older who struggles with reading or doesn't like it the nice thing is that it's a very high interest book very fast paced but the chapters are super short. So this book has 350 pages in it but it has 91 chapters. So that averages between four to five pages a chapter. Some are shorter than that, some are a little bit longer, but each chapter ends at a place that you don't want to stop. So then you look ahead and you say, oh, oh, well, the next chapter's short, so I can read just a little bit more. Oh, oh, so the next chapter's short, so I can read just a little bit more. And because the chapters are short too, when your child sits down to read, they can read in short bursts and they don't have to feel overwhelmed by what there is ahead. And then again, at the end, they have finished this big, book, which is a huge accomplishment and I think can make children feel really good about themselves. So if you can find books with shorter chapters, even bigger books with shorter chapters, I think tend to be easier for children to read than smaller books with longer chapters because you can take it piece by piece and step by step. But this next thing that I'm going to tell, tell you is something that I've actually used a lot in tutoring students and it has been really, really, really helpful, especially in building fluency. And that is reading along with an audiobook. So this is one that my son read that way, um, especially books like this where the text can seem a little bit overwhelming or just books in general. So you can get the, you can even get them both from the library. You can get the physical copy and the audiobook from your library. You can purchase one if you want, you can do whatever you want, but it's good to set the speed at normal if they if they just are not completely getting lost. You basically don't want it to be reading so fast that your child is just totally getting lost. But if they can't quite keep up at normal rate, that's okay, you can slow it down a little bit. Um, but you want them following along, listening and seeing the words. And this really helps to build fluency. It helps your child to connect the words that they're hearing with the words that they're reading on the page. And this can be super, super helpful. So letting your child read and listen to an audiobook. If your child has a book that they have to read for school, that's a little bit difficult for them. It's a perfect way to do that. And it can also help kids get in books that are more difficult, that are meet their vocabulary and their comprehension level, but might be slightly difficult for their reading level. And so this is a really, really good way to stretch them and to do that. I require um, my kids to do that from time to time, even if it's a book that they can read or whatever, I require them to do a few audiobooks while they're reading along, not just listening, not just reading, but doing both together. So that is another thing that can be helpful. So the next thing that I've kind of touched on a little bit, um, and you've seen throughout here is series and high interest books. So first of all, you want books that your kids are interested in, um, especially if you have a struggling reader or a reader that um, just doesn't like to read. I don't recommend assigning them a ton of books. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Finding books that appeal to them is really important. So my son loves these I Survive books. And because it is a series, he always wants to read more. If there's more that he hasn't read, he's happy to pick them up and read them. He's familiar with them. He knows he likes them. And so it keeps him reading. And then from there, you can also branch out into other interests. For example, with this Hurricane Katrina, if he had been really interested in this, I could look up some more things about storms, about weather, um, natural disaster related stuff, and it can help me to build a bank of books that he's really interested in. So I would say high interest. So you want things that your kids are actually interested in that they're excited about. So if your kid is excited about gaming, Find books that have kids who do gaming. Find books about gaming. Do things about gaming. And if you can find a series, even better. Because if they can get hooked in that first book, then you've got them reading. And that is wonderful. Um, the next one is a category that honestly, in a lot of especially homeschooling circles, is really looked down on. And um, I say no. If you're trying to get your child to read, my personal opinion, just like with graphic novels, is you do it. So this is the um, 
children's illustrated classics. There are a ton of books like this. Of course, this series is very well known. It's from when I was a kid. I don't know if they're still making them, but there's a lot more like this. But take classic books or things that your children love, even if it's the book version of a movie that they love. Take things that your child is familiar with and that they love, and if you need to, get a little bit of an easier version. So I love these illustrated classics because they have one page of text and one picture, always. So the pictures not only help your child to build visualizations and help their comprehension with what is going on, but again, they also help your child move at a pace that feels like success to them. And then the cool thing is a few years down the road, when your child is ready to tackle, say the original version of the Treasure Island, they already have this knowledge under their belt. They already know a little bit about what's going on. So when they come at the more challenging novel when they're older, they are coming ready to tackle that. So you're already setting them up for success at even higher level reading as well. I have two more things to share with you. The last way to tackle a book or to help kids is to team read or what I call small book club reading. So this was one of the first big chapter books that my son tackled and it was hard because it is this big chapter book. The story was very interesting to him, but he was just struggling. Um, I have a five chapter rule with my kids. If they really hate a book and they've put in five chapters and they still just hate it, unless I have a really, really good reason, I usually don't make them read it. I don't make them continue reading it. But one thing I will try to do first is to team read or book club read. So team read is when you sit down together and I'll read a page, they'll read a page, I'll read a page, they'll read a page or whatever makes sense for the book. So that is one way to do it. Um, another thing that I've done is I will read the book with my child. So for my particular child, that is very motivating because then we can talk about the story. We can talk about what happened. Oh, did you get to this part yet? Oh, did you get to that part yet? And he's very competitive. So he likes to read faster than I can keep up with him. And so it's another way that we are building a bond together. We can discuss the book. Um, feels like a book club in that way. Like, oh, did you get to this part? What did you think about it? Like, I totally wasn't expecting that to happen. I think this is going to happen next. What do you think is going to happen next? And it just builds camaraderie and it builds relationship around a book, which can really help your child to enjoy that experience even more and make something that's difficult a little more bearable for them. So the last thing that I want to talk about isn't a type of book, but it has to do with giving your child freedom in what they're reading. If you have a struggling learner, um, or if you have someone who, again, just doesn't like to read, putting in front of them a bunch of boring books that they could care less about is going to actually cause a lot more struggles for you. So many times when we give our kids these long book lists of, I want you to read this, I want you to read that, and we make them trudge through books that just don't matter to them, Obviously, once you get into high school level, once you get into higher middle grade even, that might be necessary sometimes, but I think doing that even in those levels on a limited basis is a really, really good thing. And one way that I do that, that I try and give my son choice, but at the same time make sure he's covering the things that he needs to, is I have a reading challenge. Now, I don't know if I've done a video on this before. I'll look back and see if I have any more information on this. If I do, I'll link it below, but I'll definitely be sharing a little bit more in my blog post that goes with this. But this is one that he's done in the past. And so when I'm making this, he once he fills this up, he gets a party for him. He likes to do an ice cream party, so that's what we do. And so in these boxes, I have some free choice books. I have books, choices that I put based on things that he likes. For example, he has to read a book about an animal. He needs to read a book that is about someone of a different race, a book from a series that he likes, reread a book that you've read before. Um, so I'll keep him in mind. I also, he loves Patricia Polacco. So read a book by Patricia Polacco. I try to have some kind of awards on here that I want him to read. He loves the books from Good and the Beautiful Library. So I have to read a book from there. Um, read a book to his brother. There's a lot of free choice as well. There's a book published this year. And then I also add in there books that go along with whatever we're doing in our homeschool. So for example, a book about trains because we were learning about trains or he might have a book about someone from a particular country that we are learning about. And in this case, there's a book made into a movie and he knows once he reads that book, we're gonna watch the movie together and share in that experience. But once he fills this up, he gets a prize. Now starting this out, he could pick up to, I don't remember if it was three, 
to mark off for one book that he read and then the next time he could mark off two and now we've moved up to he only gets to mark off one space per book but it would really make him think about what he was doing what he was reading it gives him a lot of ownership while at the same time it gives me a chance to kind of guide as well and uh, one of the spaces on there is always a book mom pick so if there's a book that I really would like him to read I can give him that book and say okay this will mark off that spot and we're good to go um, I like him to get suggestions from people close to him all sorts of stuff but giving them ownership of those books is helpful too so this video has turned out to be way longer than I intended it to be, but I hope that you have found some useful resources here, some ideas to help kick off the year with your struggling reader or your reluctant reader so that maybe they can someday love books. If you need any specific book suggestions or idea, please leave your questions in the comments below. I love, 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 love helping to find um, good books and resources for kids. That is one of my favorite things to do when I was tutoring and even still now is finding things that really help kids light up. I love the challenge and I really, really enjoy enjoy connecting kids with books and seeing them love them. Another thing, ooh, I just had an idea from um, a recent tutoring session. Don't discredit magazines. Magazines are a great way to do this. If you can find a magazine that your child is interested in, definitely, definitely subscribe to that magazine. Again, the articles are in chunks. They can read it here and there. They can look at the pictures. Totally another good option. If you have any other ideas, please leave them in the comments below. Please don't forget to check out um, Katie at Life in the Mundane and Tanya over at Project Happy Home because they're going to have more ideas for you there. And yeah, I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.